What's up everybody? This is part 3 of a 4 part mini series on intrinsic motivation which is the key to being driven and how to spark inspiration. In the first video, in the card above, I introduced the idea of intrinsic motivation. I explained the experiments that led to its discovery, why it is important, and how extrinsic motivation impedes intrinsic motivation. In the second video, in the card above, I discussed C out of CAR, which is the acronym I'm using to describe intrinsic motivation. Essentially, competence relies heavily on a snowball effect. And also, I explain how people can turn extrinsic motivation into intrinsic motivation. And in this video, I'm going to explain the A out of CAR. Now, the A out of CAR is autonomy, and it is our ability to be self-directed in our behavior. We do something because we like it and because we choose to do so. Now, remember when I said earlier that extrinsic motivation methods are okay for what we call algorithmic activities, which are rote activities, but they're not so good for heuristic. And the reason for this is because extrinsic motivation essentially undermines this autonomy. What extrinsic motivators do is that it puts the value of doing an activity based on the reward rather than the inherent satisfaction of doing it itself. And this applies to anything, ranging from gold stars to money. So according to Edward Desi, when money is used as an external reward for some activity, the subjects lose intrinsic interest for the activity. And this has been proven time and again through experiments that psychologists have done. So in this case, psychologists have repeated Desi's experiment on kids by doing a puzzle. So in this experiment, there were two groups. One group of kids were told that they would be given a gold star if they completed the activity. The other group were not told that they received a gold star, but they received one unexpectedly at the end. And what they found was that the group that completed the experiment and expected the gold star actually did not have that much interest in continuing to do the puzzle, while the group that received the gold star unexpectedly did not diminish in their interest in pursuing that activity. So what that essentially tells us is that if we work under the expectation that we'd receive a reward for something, it is very likely that it will undermine the inherent satisfaction of doing that activity. On the other hand, if you get rewarded and you did not expect a reward, it doesn't really diminish the motivation in the satisfaction of doing that activity. In other words, extrinsic motivation undermines intrinsic motivation when rewards are expected. So what does this mean for yourself? Number one, don't live for money. Because money is largely a means to an end. You don't, you don't get, people don't pursue money because it's money, right? It's just bills or numbers, what money essentially does is it gives you something or it gets you a lifestyle that you desire. However, at the end of the day, it is a means to an end. On the other hand, you can live with a higher purpose. And what I mean by that is it could be something that you value. So for example, you value family, so you pursue things that are good for your family. If you prioritize environmentalism, then pursue something that helps the environment. Essentially, what we know about autonomy is that you need to pursue something because it is something that you like to pursue and reward yourself for small victories. In relation to competence, it is important to reward yourself for small victories until you get really good at it and you become even more autonomous in pursuing something. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you start out by doing math and you need someone beside you to help you do math, um, after a while, after you develop a higher level of competence, you no longer need this person, right? And therefore, as a result, you have the autonomy to pursue math by yourself and you're no longer reliant on this person. So essentially what autonomy and competence does is it hooks onto one another and it feeds into one another. So what does this knowledge of autonomy and intrinsic motivation mean for parents? What this means is that you must let your child pursue something that they find inherently satisfying. And I know all the parents are gonna say, my child loves watching TV, playing video games, and eating junk food, right? Of course, there's a balance. I'm not saying give them free reign to do whatever they want, but it also means that let them explore. Let them have opportunities to explore what's out there so that they can find something that's interesting to them so that they can pursue that. 
And what I also mean is that they need boring time. And when I say boring, I literally mean times where they're bored and you don't let them watch the TV or you don't let them play video games. You let them sit down and kind of think of something to do to get them out of that boredom. And it's actually in this boredom where creativity really kicks in and allows the child to become an autonomous individual to pursue something that they're interested in. So essentially, I mean bore your kids so that they find something to do that interests them. And that way, it helps your child develop motivation. One, one major problem I see a lot of parents doing nowadays is that they fill their kids' schedules up to the extent where they no longer have any downtime. And when there's no downtime, there's basically no time for boredom, there's no time for restlessness, and there's no time for them to explore. Their downtime is essentially used for resting and for them to turn their brains off. So that doesn't help with innovation, it doesn't help with autonomy. What does autonomy mean for people at work? Well, if you're a boss, it basically means allowing your direct reports to have the autonomy to pursue how they want their careers to develop. And of course, it has to be aligned with the companies, right? And I'm not saying let them do whatever and there's no sense of direction. But find win-win situations where your direct reports and you and the company are aligned. And that autonomous pursuit will feed into the intrinsic motivation of your staff. It also will increase workplace satisfaction and retention. What they found in a 2018 study by Deloitte was that Gen Z's and Millennials prefer jobs that allow for their autonomous pursuit of their own development. And that actually is essentially what the A is all about. Furthermore, they also prefer jobs that have a higher value. So something that's beyond themselves, that has a higher purpose, and they prefer these types of jobs. And so if you're able to foster this type of environment at your workplace, that'd be great. I'm actually interested in knowing what you do to support autonomy, whether it's at the workplace, at home, with your family, with your kids. Um, leave a comment below and let me know. Next video, I'm going to talk about the R of car. So make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell. And if you like this video, like it, share it, and take care.